In Virginia, a national title awaits, as does a Heisman for a superb quarterback, provided the Cavs win by a landslide. Welcome to the College Football Today pregame show. Here's Andrea Joyce and Mike Francesa. Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us on College Football Today. Coming up on CBS, top-ranked Virginia faces probably the only team that can keep the Cavaliers from an unbeaten regular season, that, of course, being Georgia Tech. And, you know, Virginia founder Thomas Jefferson once asked, is uniformity of opinion attainable? And, Mike, the prevailing opinion is that Virginia is number one, but do they need more than just a win today? They do need more than a win. They need a declaration. They have to win impressive, impressively to justify their number one ranking and to enhance Sean Moore's Heisman candidacy. All right, now, we were down in Charlottesville several days ago, and a lot of the players were very unhappy with you insinuating that they are not a number one team. A lot of folks down in Charlottesville unhappy with me because I said Notre Dame would beat Virginia by two touchdowns in a bowl game, and one writer even called me, Mike, I never met a snack I didn't like, Francesa. <laughs> I like Virginia today and big, 34 to 10. Okay, one thing is certain, it has been a week of excitement and anticipation in Charlottesville, but an unfortunate incident occurred early this morning, and for more on that, we go to John Dockery. Andrea, the setting here at the University of Virginia, storybook perfect. The weather, bright and beautiful. And the grounds designed by Thomas Jefferson, well, kind of a calm before the big game. A record crowd, somewhere around 47,000 is expected here today. But the joy of homecoming was disturbed last night when a security guard walking by Scott Stadium looked down here on the 50-yard line and saw a huge blaze on the AstroTurf. Apparently vandals had broken in, used charcoal lighting fluid, and set it ablaze, creating an 18 by 32-foot hole right down to the asphalt. Workers were here all night long. They dragged the remnants out to a nearby field, and then they brought in new turf from the field, which had been torn up two years ago. They spent some time cutting it and fitting it and gluing it down with fast-drying cement in the hopes of it adhering quickly. They also rolled it, and you know what? The fit looks pretty good. Bobby Ross was concerned about the situation. He was out here earlier, as was his counterpart from Virginia, George Welsh, who had this to say about the situation. I've just looked at it. I think it's fine. I think that the important thing is that it's even. There are no ridges, no lumps, and the consistency doesn't seem too much different than the new stuff. The bad news is that the vandalism may cost up to fifty to sixty thousand dollars. The good news, well, eighty degrees here, unseasonably high temperatures, may cause the glue to adhere more securely. Impact in the game, well, maybe a distraction, not much else. I asked Bobby Ross that question, and he looked at me and said, "Hey, we'd play this game on concrete." All right, Doc. Thanks. Let's hope it's not a factor today. Now, if Virginia continues to win, the national title could be determined in January at the Citrus Bowl with the Cavaliers playing, according to the most likely scenario, Notre Dame. And today, out at the Meadowlands, Notre Dame is leading Navy 24 to 10. This game in the third quarter, Notre Dame has dominated this series, winning the last 26 in a row. The Irish went ahead on their first possession of the second half on that seven-yard touchdown run by Rodney Culver. And Curry Kirkpatrick is out at the Meadowlands. Let's join him now. Curry, Navy really hung in there with Notre Dame in the first half. What's the story now in the third quarter? Well, Andre, this was supposed to be Notre Dame's breather week, and uh, they're in control of the game now, but they were breathing very hard in the first half, mainly because Navy came out with a complete surprise, a wishbone offense run by senior quarterback Alton Grizzard, who's run it the last three years, but have, they have not used it that much at all this year, except in the Villanova game. I talked to Lou Holtz at halftime. And he said, we didn't see the Villanova game. I asked him if he's going to get the ball to, ro to Rocket Ishmael in the second half. He just said, we want to get the ball to our offense in the second half. And they've done that. Curry, one of the big reasons Navy probably came out in a bone was the absence of All-American nose tackle Chris Zorich. Now, next week, the big game at Tennessee. What's his status? Well, Mike, at, at Notre Dame, the people are saying it's day-to-day -day with Chris Zorich. Uh, Lou Holtz has a policy. You do not play unless you practice. Zorich, of course, has not practiced this week. They do not know if he'll practice next week, but he's going to be ready at some time during the season. They're just not sure if it's going to be next week. 
Curry, thanks. We will see you later on today. And when we come back at halftime, Curry will have an interview with The Rocket. Now, another Heisman candidate is out in Colorado Springs today. It's BYU and Air Force. They will kick off shortly. And we will see how Ty Detmer does in the snow and in the cold. They had to shovel off two inches of snow off of Falcon Stadium Field this, after, this morning. And they are expecting up to six inches of snow. Wind chill factor, zero degrees. Meanwhile, in Cincinnati, it's Louisville taking on the Bearcats, Louisville with the lead in the third quarter. And this is really like a home game for the Cardinals. They were expecting some 15,000 fans to make the 100-mile trip north to watch the Cardinals play this afternoon. And number 12, Florida State is leading South Carolina in the third quarter. Florida State could use a win today to stay in the running for a major bowl bid. And we will be back with more from College Football Today in a moment. And we have a score update for you now from the Meadowlands. They were tied at halftime, 10-10. Notre Dame has pulled away, though, in the third quarter, 31-10 now over Navy. And, Mike, let's look ahead a little bit to our game coming up, Virginia and Georgia Tech. I think Georgia Tech is a very, very good defensive team. A lot of personnel on that side of the football. I don't think they'll be able to get it done offensively today. They'll leave their defense on the field too long, and Virginia will make enough big plays to win this by more than three touchdowns, 34-10. All right, we'll find out. And we will be back at halftime with scores and highlights. Now let's go out to Jim Nance in Charlottesville. All right, Andrea, the weather is absolutely perfect. Will Virginia's perfect season continue? It will be the first time ever two Atlantic Coast Conference teams have met in November without a loss. And it's coming up after this message and a word from your local station. Thomas Jefferson was one of our nation's founding fathers and the founding father of the University of Virginia. Little did he know that one day his school would sign a declaration of indestructibility. In less than a decade for the Cavaliers, George Welsh has gained independence from losing. His pass and run patriot, Sean Moore, is gaining support in the Heisman race. And Virginia is ranked number one from the original 13 colonies to the rest of the country. Bobby Ross has started a revolution at Georgia Tech. His Yellow Jackets have not been stung with defeat this year. Their defense is one of the stingiest in the states. And today they'll be out to overthrow Virginia and take a bite out of its Cinderella season. Today America will find out if number one Virginia is for real. It's the Cavs and the Rambling Wreck coming up next. On a CFA Saturday, we welcome you to the lush Piedmont of Charlottesville, Virginia. If you ever get in this area, you have to spend a nickel on the tour of Monticello. You also must stop by the nearby campus with its Jeffersonian architecture. There's the noted honor student dormitory known as the Lawn. But today, the biggest honor is to have a ticket to 16th ranked Georgia Tech and number one ranked Virginia. For 59 years, students and alumni from the University of Virginia on autumn afternoons have walked from their majestic grounds to Scott Stadium. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Jim Nance, and welcome simply to the biggest game that's ever been played here. I'm surrounded by the guys from the Delta Upsilon fraternity and their dates. You can't help but notice that everyone has a, a little extra bounce in their step today because there is so much at stake here. Possibly the national championship for Virginia, certainly the ACC championship, and maybe even the Heisman Trophy for quarterback Sean Moore. And as we approach game time and the stadium, just below us in their locker room, the Cavaliers are sitting around and wondering how they will shoulder the pressure and scrutiny that they face from the nation today, Tim Brandt. All right, Jim, the top-ranked team in the nation, the number one offense in the country, and yet it is a team searching for credibility as they sit in that locker room. 
They firmly believe that they have earned the right, that they deserve to be the best of the rest until somebody proves elsewhere. Well, you know, there is an inordinate amount of pressure on the quarterback. That's Sean Moore today. He is a fifth-year grad student, very poised, productive, mature. As a matter of fact, he generates a touchdown every one out of every ten times that he either runs or passes with a football. I believe, like a lot of other people today, that he can win or lose the Heisman Trophy in this ballgame. He knows that, and he's still loose. I've heard it, and uh, I've also uh, seen it in a lot of publications this week, and uh, I, I think the important thing for me is not let that hinder my performance. You know, I'm going to go, and uh, I'm really looking forward to playing this game, and uh, I think I'm ready to play. Um, I think the team is ready, and uh, I'm ready for them. I'm ready to go out and, and take on this tough defense. Now, Sean Moore is not the only weapon. There's Herman Moore, no relation. Acrobatic wide receiver, he's dangerous. The two running backs, Terry Kirby, high school player of the year in 1988. And there's also Fisher. And those two tailbacks are going for 100 or 1,000 yards, rather. They are on that pace. So it's a very explosive Virginia offense. Now, as we go inside the Georgia Tech locker room, let me just throw it down to John Dockery and just say that it will be a major test, a severe challenge for that highly rated Yellow Jacket defense. And Tim, the final tense moments before the game starts. The Yellow Jacks perhaps pondering the fact that, that they win today, they can take over first in the ACC in a feather in their cap for knocking off the number one team. Defense is the name of the game for Georgia Tech. That's the way Vincent Bobby Dodd was there, and that's the way it is with Bobby Ross. Pressure defense. If they win today, they must get pressure from linebackers like Marco Polo, who has Marco Coleman, who has nine of the 33 sacks for Tech. And from the largest free safety in captivity, six foot three inch, 236 pound, Ken Swilling, who is indeed very passionate about this game. The thought that uh, consumed me here was how confident, how cocky they were, and uh, how uh, how ripe they were for you know how, how ripe they are to uh, to be beat. Um, I feel like this is the right time of the season for us to be playing them because right now you know they they've said a lot of things in the papers and they've said a lot of things about me and about our team and you know we're kind of off right now and we're ready to play pressure defense makes it happen if it happens today for georgia tech blitzing stunting making it happen turnover defense these guys behind me are ready jim nance back up to you the yellow jackets have not lost in their last 11 games the tie this year was against north carolina let's go let's go Virginia comes out at the same time. There's the coach, George Welsh. Bobby Ross. A remarkable turnaround for Georgia Tech. It's going to be the biggest crowd in Virginia history. There's never been a game like this one here. Virginia and Georgia Tech at last. CBS Sports presents College Football. Live from Scott Stadium in Charlottesville, Virginia, it's the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets versus the Virginia Cavaliers. Today's CFA game is sponsored by Toyota's quality line of cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. UPS, now offering 10.30 a.m. guaranteed overnight air delivery. And by Bud Light, everything else is just a light. Can you believe the warm conditions in November? 80 degrees at kickoff. And maybe the field is now just beginning to cool off. If you missed the story earlier, vandalism struck here at Scott Stadium about 4 o'clock this morning. Someone set the artificial playing surface on fire. It burned the playing surface right down to the concrete. And a last second repair job from the old playing field has things back in shape and ready to go. They did an outstanding job too, Jim. I was just looking at it. I was down on the field walking on it. There are no major seams. It's very level. I don't think it'll cause any problem whatsoever. These two teams with a burning desire to gain respectability today. And Virginia won the toss, deferred to Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets will receive. Michael Husted will kick 
And Kevin Tisdale, who ran a kickback last week for a touchdown, waits for the Jackets. Tisdale, two yards deep. Here he comes. Out to the 20. 